This is Twit. I mean, after all, we know that young people will, if given the opportunity, ask for songs about poop from their uh, Amazon Echo or their Siri. That's why this guy, <laughs> this guy right here, has recorded tens of thousands of songs and put them on Spotify. Matt Farley is his name. You saw the New York Times Sunday Magazine article by Brett Martin. <laughs> Farley even some years ago made a song about Brett Martin called You're a Nice Man. Yes. You want to, can we, can we hear it? Mm, you're a radio guy. You're a writer <laughs> man. You're At the end of this, oh, I'll put song in air quotes. You're a wonderful person. <laughs> At the end of this, it's only a minute and 14 seconds long. He actually gives uh, his phone number, Matt Farley does. So Brett Martin, having stumbled upon this, called him. And he said, I, honestly, uh, <laughs> Martin says, I said, this is Brett Martin. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to call. <laughs> the man had no idea who I was. You have to understand, he said apologetically, I've written over 24,000 songs. I wrote 50 songs yesterday. Matt Farley, who lives in Danvers, Mass, on the North Shore, apparently... Explain this business model. Uh, well, if you put this stuff on Spotify, you can make some money. Not a lot. I thought he was going to be loaded, rolling in it. Uh, according to the Times, in 2008, Farley's search engine optimization project, because that's what this is, really, took in $3,000. Uh, in 2012, $24,000. Now, it's a little bit more. Uh, he, to date, his band, he has many, but the band, the Toilet Bowl Cleaners and uh, <laughs> and the <laughs> and the song Poop in My Fingernails. We could play it if, you, if you'd like oh, to hear No, it. no, please do I not. I think we're all right, actually. Not. Has collectively... No, 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 stop. I'm, no. I'm, gonna, I'm channeling John here. No, don't let it, don't do it. No. Come on. Every no. kid in the uh, listening audience has heard this song. Brought in four hundred sixty nine thousand uh, no. dollars, but they're but they're not the only big money songs. Uh, he has a song by Papa Razzi and the Photogs, uh, which earned forty one thousand dollars. The best birthday. How does he earn this though? I'm not sure. Spotify just, be just by quantity. Yeah. Spotify. So if you search, or you even ask, as if anybody who has younger kids knows. They love saying, hey, play a poop song to Echo, and it will play one of his songs. Toilet blow cleaners are huge in the in the under eight set. Uh, in fact, he has a lot of songs about going to the bathroom. <laughs> and I think this is what's wrong with streaming. You know, that, that like eight-year-old's can define culture. What? Well, uh, mm -hmm. oh, 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 to Coco oh. Melon. Barney. Barney. Yeah, That's all culture. I have to say. Yeah, Barney was terrible. Uh, there's a, uh, the best birthday Were song. Were you raised on ever. Barney, uh, Paris? Yeah. I love oh. you. You oh, love please me. Please, no, Leo, no. Oh, happy, family. happy family. But that's not like, that's wow. not the same as a poop song. I, I'm sorry. That's not the same. <laughs> it is to me. Actually, You're Barney saying it's a worse. higher quality? Barney was worse because Barney took well-known songs and added horrible lyrics to them. Not, not insulting just oh and matt farley with his poop songs would never do that <laughs> <laughs> he says people like to criticize the whole streaming thing but there's really a lot of pros to it in 2023 last year two hundred thousand dollars farley's earnings help him fund his other creative endeavors he records oh, what he calls creative. his no jokes music including a two-man band he's been in since, in since college called moe's haven which once recorded an album a day for a year. He's apparently big on quantity. He hosts two podcasts. Ah, there you go. That's where the real money is. One about his work, the other about recapping Celtics games. And he makes micro-budget movies. Starring two his, a year. Two a year. This guy was the creative kid in third grade. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad he's making a couple hundred thousand a year. Um, he works hard for it. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It, it's not like he's, you know, sitting on his keister. He says, I could fill a 5,000-seat arena if I could only get everybody in one place. 
<laughs> His theory is that every idea, no matter its apparent value, must be honored and completed. An idea thwarted is an insult to the muse and is oh punished God, accordingly. Oh, God, spare me. I liked him till that. <laughs> he says if you reject your own ideas, then the part of the brain that comes up with ideas is going to stop. You just do it and do it and do it, and you'll sort it out later. Oh, like Which I think is kind of an interesting philosophy. There, so, uh, yeah, I mean, writing, often writers say, I, don't think about what you're writing, just write. You can edit it later. Your mistake is pausing and editing and all, and all that. Here he is composing a song on his street out in front of his house <laughs> <laughs> with a very long extension cord. Now, I Beautiful. think that's staging the news. Did the New York Times photographer tell him, let's, hey, I got an idea. Let's go out in the street with your rolling. You just happened to see him in the street when they drove up. See, it was we perfect, were, perfect when moment. I worked for NBC, we were told again and again. Oh, never do this. You cannot get people to do something for the camera. You can only record what they would be doing otherwise. If, right? Oh, so you do you really think the New no. York Times definitely doesn't do that? Because otherwise there is a epidemic of people standing dramatically in fields across <laughs> America because that is every photo you see well, in a professor New York Times. Well, when I work for Jarvis, people is that staging when I work for people yeah when I work for people it just so happens that all these famous stars were all in their kitchen making pasta oh god it just happened. <laughs> all of them yeah well, I'm proud to say, and maybe I was the only guy who actually believed the NBC guidelines, but we were, I was very careful not to, you know, you go in to do a story about uh, some guy who's written some program. You don't say, hey, could you sit down at the computer and pretend to type? You don't do that. Oh, God. But Leo, the B-roll... I mean, well, I've done get, so much B-roll. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of right. Yeah, where you do just that, you, you type like something meaningless. You walk into an yeah. office. Oh yeah, B-roll B -roll is a lie. Naughties are a lie. Uh, but TV lies. Let's play another Matt Farley song. No, this is called "Shut Up Your Monkey." It's Leo Laporte. I hope you enjoyed this little snippet from our show this week in Google. For the full show, you can either go to our website, twit.tv slash twig, or find twig in your favorite podcast client. And, of course, there's links right below, somewhere down there, for more information.